Scene 1, 1964. An evening in September. A restroom in Washington, D.C. Grimy and poorly kept. There are two urinals and a toilet stall with a door. A sink stands next to the urinals. Walter comes in and stands for a little bit. After a few minutes, Byard walks in and looks the restroom over. Walter doesn't notice him at first. Byard takes the urinal next to him. Walter glances over. He sees Byard and gets nervous. Byard notices his obvious shock and smiles. Walter does his zipper up and moves to the sink. Byard watches him. <clears throat> How would you expect it? Walter uh, continues washing his hands. I asked not what you expected. What? Um, I asked you if uh, I was not what you expected. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> sure. What? You're, you're sure that you don't know what I mean? Look, I'm just washing my hands. Sure. Walter finishes washing his hands and tries to find a clean towel to dry them, but can't find one. Damn it. What's wrong? There's no clean towel. Were you expecting some in this place? It's a public restroom. Yeah, it is. I just wouldn't expect any clean towel in this one. Surprised that you didn't notice there wasn't any. What? I'm surprised that you didn't notice there wasn't any clean towel. I just came in here. Uh-huh. What? You seem jittery to me. What? Jittery, like you were nervous. I don't understand what you're talking about. The problem is, I can't figure out what you would be jittery about. Look, I'm just going to go. No, I can't figure that part out. What? About why you would be jittery. That could be lots of things. I'm not jittery. <laughs> you are listening. Uh, no, you're jittery. <laughs> I'm not jittery. And yet you're still here. Because you won't stop talking to me. Just because I keep talking doesn't mean you have to keep listening. You're crazy. Well, that could be one of the reasons that you're jittery. Could be that I'm crazy. Jesus. No, I'm not that crazy to think I'm Jesus. Actually, I'm not crazy at all. I've been told that, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, ain't that the truth. If I'm not crazy, then maybe the reason you're jittery is that I might be violent. Look, I'm not jittery. Just leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could be violent, but I, I made a vow not to be long ago. <laughs> you made a vow? Yes, a vow. Nonviolence is how I operate. Okay, fine. So, now I've eliminated two reasons why you might be jittery. So if I'm not crazy. I haven't ruled that one out yet. True, uh, but I have. So if I'm not crazy and I'm not violent, then maybe you're jittery because I'm black. Hey, I'm not racist. I don't care if you're racist or not. This isn't, isn't about you. I, I'm just saying, I don't care if you're black. Well, I do, I like being black. I, I'm just saying that... Maybe you should stop talking. No, I'm sure that me being black freaked you out. Washington DC ain't the South, but using the same restroom isn't exactly the place that you would want to be. Look, I just came in here to use the restroom. I, I didn't mean to offend you. What makes you think you could offend me? I mean... No. This has nothing to do with offending me or getting caught in your feelings or anything like that. 
I'm sure that the last person you expected to be standing in the stall next to you would be a black man. Yeah, I, I'm certain of that. And don't repeat any of that I'm not racist crap. I don't care. See, I don't think that's why you're jittery. Look, can I just go? You could go whenever you wanted. I ain't holding you back. Okay, yeah, fine. But I'm sure that this was the most conversation that you've had in a public restroom. What? Conversation, talking, listening, like, like we're doing for the past bit. Yeah, I know what conversation is. I figured you might. You can leave anytime you like. I'm just saying that conversation isn't exactly something you find in a public restroom. I think you could agree with that. Yeah, men don't talk in the restroom. Well, we are talking a bit, aren't we? Yes, yes we are. And wouldn't you say that was odd? Yes, it is. I'm glad that we can agree on that. Suddenly you're not so jittery. A little bit, but not nearly as much. No, I'm, I'm not. Well then, I'm suspecting that you're not jittery because I'm black. Surprised, yes, but jittery, no. Sure. Well, um, I'm leaving. It was nice meeting you. Uh, well, isn't that sweet? I don't think that I've ever met and chatted with someone so much in a public restroom before. I wouldn't know. Really? What? You wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't know. Did you happen to chat with that fellow before me much? What? The fellow before me. I saw him leaving the restroom. I, I don't know. Don't know who he is or if you talk to him? Neither. Ah, I wasn't sure. Okay, I'm leaving. Yes, of course. You keep saying that. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, but don't let me stop you. How big was it? What? How big was it? I don't know what you're talking about. How big was his cock? What? You heard what I asked. I don't know what you think. I... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do. Look, you can just shut up. Yes, I could, but <laughs> this is way more fun. You're sick. Really? But I thought we agreed that I wasn't crazy. I never did. Ah, you're right. Well, my mistake. Leave me alone. I'm doing nothing. I'm just standing here asking you a simple question. How big was his cock? You could just say you don't know. I don't know. But now you lie. I'm not lying. But you're not leaving, <laughs> are you? Was it as big as mine? What? You seem so shocked. I saw you look over at me. I just looked your way. I didn't look at that. <laughs> My cock? Your cock. <laughs> I didn't look at it. See, I could swear that you looked over at my cock and when you saw it, you got jittery. Surprised that it was black. Pretty sure that you've never seen a black cock before. Just leave me alone. I didn't look at it. Then why are you still here? Because you won't shut up and quit talking. But I ain't keeping you here. Nothing is keeping you here. Unless of course you wanna see my black cock again and make sure that it was bigger than the white guys before me. You don't really have to, I'm pretty sure it was. I knew that white guy was here to just use the restroom. What are you saying? You see, you can try to convince me that you came to this restroom out of some chance to use this urinal, but we know better, don't we? I just came to use the restroom. 
Sure. And how long were you waiting in your parked car outside before another white guy came in? I wasn't waiting. Sure. You see, I think that you needed to use this particular restroom for a little while. Maybe you were just waiting for a half hour to make sure that you had to go. But most people don't wait that long in their car outside a public restroom in a park. You use a public restroom when you need to go or when you need something else. I'm not that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not judging you. I have better things to do than judge white people outside of public restrooms. I have better things to do. Still, I believe, and you must agree, that you're here less for having to go than for the something else I mentioned. I'm leaving. Think what you want to think. Hey, I'm not judging. I'm also standing here in a public restroom. I looked at you too. <laughs> you have a nice cock. Not as big as mine, but don't be disappointed. I I'm not talking anymore. Did you want to see my big black cock again? What? You heard me. Did you want to see my big black cock again? I... You said that you didn't want to talk anymore. Look. I asked you quite plainly, did you want to see my big black cock? Yes. Uh, sorry, could you repeat? that? Yes, I want to see it. Well, it's all you had to say. Byron unzips his pants. Walter starts to walk over. Byron opens his pants. Walter gets closer. Byron lowers his underwear. Walter is next to Byron looking at his cock. Byron looks at Walter in the eye and nods. Walter, shaking, takes Byron's cock in his hands and holds it. You like it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this restroom is a little grimy. Let's take this somewhere nicer. Walter lets go of Byard's cock. Byard pulls his underwear and pants up and zips up. Um, you leave first. Where will I follow you? There's a small hotel near the east entrance into the park. It's clean. Hmm, good. I like clean. I'll be waiting outside the motel when you get the key. Walter leaves first and Byard goes to wash his hands, sadly remembering there is no clean towel. Byard is annoyed but deals with it. After about what seems an eternity, Byard leaves. Scene two. A motel room. Stuffy, but clean. There is a bed, a small desk and chair, and a plush chair in the room. The door opens and Walter enters. He looks nervously out the window next to the door, making sure no one is watching. He walks over to the bed and feels it for bounce. He then crosses to the bathroom and inspects it quickly. There's a knock at the door. Walter looks again around the entire room before he goes to the door. He opens it to Byard. No one's watching. 
I just need to make sure. You don't think I checked? I just need to be certain. I'm a black man entering an all white motel with the exception of the all black cleaning staff. I'm sure. Well, good. Did you always check around you? Why do you ask? You just made a valid point. I do. The world is getting to be much smaller. I have to take care of myself. I'm sure you do. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the place. I can see that. <laughs> you found it fine? I did. I'm standing here, right? <laughs> uh, yes, you are. Have you been here often? What? You know what I asked. Have you brought men here often? No, uh, sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm really nervous. Why is that? May I be frank? <laughs> By all means, please be frank. Uh, is that your name, Frank? No, I, I, I just want to say something. OK. I've never brought a Negro man here before. I have brought other men. Not many, but some, none of them were black. <laughs> You're not exactly surprising me there. I know, it's just that uh, this, this is new to me. Do you think but that my body is different from yours? Or no, but... Uh, well then, there's nothing to worry about. I know, it's just that being with a black man might be different. Do you think I've been to many motel rooms with white men? Sorry? Do you think I find a whole pile of white men and go back to their motels? I wouldn't know. Do you go to motels often? <laughs> I like you. You're, you're funny. Why am I funny? You're just, you're just funny. You, you look like you're thinking about every single thing you're doing before you do it. I, I imagine you ran around this entire room to make sure that everything was here. I'm just nervous. Byard stands up, walks over to Walter and strokes his face. You have nothing to be nervous about. I hope this room is fine. I, I did run around, like you said. It's fine. It has a bed. Yes. Yes, it does. Why don't you sit down on the bed? Oh, yes. No, no, no. Just sit down. Nothing else. Oh, I, I, I just thought... Um, you just thought this would be quick. Yes. Has it always been quick for you? Sorry? Has it always been quick before when you brought men back here? It depends. It, it, it really hasn't been that often. I'm cautious. Because you were the black man. No, just cautious. I've had problems before. Problems? with the police. I'm a black man. I know what problems with the police are. Yeah. No, it, it's not the same thing. It's, it's hard to explain. Um, True. They see me and instinctually know there's a problem. This is different. No, yes, I've met men before and there has been trouble. Well, no one saw us, so you have nothing to worry about. I know. It, it's just, it's always on my mind. You never said if you uh, did this much. No, I didn't. I've done this now and then. Huh. Any problems? A few. Nothing to worry about. It's just stuff like this can get you into a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's true. And it's something that is hard to get out of. 
Yes, I, I understand. Are you saying you want to stop? No, yes, no, I, I don't know. I just don't want to get caught. Well, no one does. I, it's different for me. Why is that? I don't want to get caught either. Jail is jail. I've been there too. You have? Yeah, for this particular trouble. Like you, I'm sure. Yes, it's just that people know me. And you don't want them to know about this. Yes, it, it could hurt people. And yet, you're sitting on a bed and I'm sitting across from you and here we are. There's no one else here. Yes. Would you like to sit next? Would you like me to sit next to you? Yes. Byard moves from the chair to the bed and sits next to Walter. He places his hand on Walter's knee. Walter gets nervous. It's okay. You're, you're okay. I know. You are a funny one. Why do you keep saying that? Because if we were caught, we all know who would be worse treated, and, <laughs> and you're the nervous one. I know. Suddenly, the sound of a siren is heard outside, causing Walter to jump up and move to the window. He pulls the curtain open a slit and looks out. It, it's nothing. It's not for us. I know. I'm just nervous. About being caught. Yes. I've been caught before. Once. Sit here next to me and tell me. Tell you? Tell me about being caught. Um, it was almost five years ago. I went to a restroom, like the one where I met you. Not sure if I meant to stay as long as I did, but I did. A man came in, white, about the same age. He was wearing a suit. I guess he was coming from work. I was also coming from work. I had left early. I had heard about this restroom. Some buddies at work joked about what people did there. They called them faggots, degenerates. I was dumb. I didn't know what they meant. So I asked. And they said they were guys who touched other men. <laughs> when they left, the only thing that stayed in my head was that restroom. So a week later, I went to that restroom. But I, I didn't go in. I, I just stayed in my car and looked at it. A week later, again, I did the same thing. Just sat in the car and watched. A man would drive up now and then and, and go in. Then another man would drive up and go in too. And when I saw the cars show up, I, I slid down in my seat. I was far enough away. No one really bothered me. 20 minutes later, one guy came out. And a few minutes after he left, the other man came out. I, I slid up to watch him and I accidentally hit the car horn. <laughs> he got scared and ran away fast. I drove away too, really fast. But you went back? Yes. Two weeks later, I went back again. All I could think about were there were these men who went into this restroom. Well, no one else had been around and well, I figured my car horn thing was forgotten by then. So I went back. This time I got out of my car and I, I went into the restroom. Stood there at a urinal for a long while. <laughs> I don't know what I was waiting for. I could have been waiting all day. Well, then a guy came in. He hadn't been one of the guys from before. I stood at my urinal and he stood at his. He unzipped his pants and he, uh, and he Pulled it out. Yes. He pulled it out. After a few moments, he looked over at me and 
he looked over at mine. I couldn't help but look over at his. Slowly, he reached over with his hand and he touched me. Chill went through my body. He slowly stroked me and after a few minutes, I... Yeah? I was shaking so much, I, I didn't know what to do. I, so I looked over and we looked in each other's eyes and he motioned downwards and I, I reached over and I touched his. It was... I can't even be thinking about it. It was. Yeah, I understand. Suddenly a voice came over my right shoulder. What the hell do you think you perverts are doing? There were two cops there standing in the doorway. I couldn't move. I, I was just frozen there. Well, the other guy bolted for the door, pants still down. They hauled him to the ground, the cement floor. He was screaming. They clubbed him to make him stop moving. After a few hits, he stopped making sounds and stopped moving. I was still standing there, my hand outstretched to where it had been before. Well, one cop hauled the guy to the police car. The other one looked over at me. I knew he was staring, but I couldn't look back at him. I could feel his stare on me, but I couldn't move. He grabbed me by the hair and he smashed me against the wall, just crashing my face up against the brick surface. I could feel the scraping of my skin and the blood start to drip off of my face. He took my outstretched hand and yanked it behind me, put a cuff on my wrist. He grabbed the other wrist and cuffed it, rammed my face into the wall again. Still couldn't move. He spun me around, threw me to the floor. I, I fell to my knees and he laughed and said, well, yeah, that's just where you perverts like to be. Yanked me up, took me to the police car. I'm sorry. Yeah. What happened? It was on record. I figured, but what happened after that? What do you mean? Well, I, I found you in the restroom again today. I'm assuming that you returned after that. Sometimes. Not for long. The slightest sound would scare me off. I see. Well, then, it was my lucky day. I guess. Don't know why anyone would want to hurt this because it's wrong then why are you why are you here i don't know we both know why you came back to the restroom we both know why we're sitting here on the bed maybe this was a bad idea and why would you think that i shouldn't be this nervous like i'm doing something wrong then let's do something right Byard slides closer to Walter and his hand rides up Walter's leg. Do you like that? Yes. No, yes. It's okay to like it. I shouldn't be here. Because then your wife would know? What? Because I said then your wife would know. I don't have a wife. Yeah, you do. No. Then why is there a spot on your finger where a ring would be? I, I don't know what you mean. You didn't think I would see where a wedding, a wedding ring would be? I think I should leave. But you don't want to, do you? No. 10 years. Married? Yes. She doesn't know. Most don't. You? 
No. Why not? I'm not interested in women. She loves me. I'm sure she does. What? What? You don't think I love her? Sure you do. I do. And I said, I'm sure you do. Why do you do that? What? Manipulate a person like that. I'm not doing nothing like that. You just did it in the restroom. You just did it here. Look, I'm just observing. Sure, observing. Waiting for the right moment to say something. That's not manipulation. It is manipulation. It's calculation. Look, if you don't want to do this, fine. That's what you want. That's what you want to leave here, being right, to think you know everything about me. Well, you don't. I never said I did. You don't know me. You don't know who I am. I never said I did. Then stop acting like it. Just stop it. Walter is almost hyperventilating and Bayard is nervous. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. Just, just relax. Walter slumps to the floor and starts crying. I just don't know what I'm doing. You're doing nothing but talking with me. It's, it's okay. I shouldn't be here. That's up to you. You can leave or you can stay. I'm very confused. I know. Fire gets up and walks over to Walter. He offers his hand. Take my hand. Get off the floor. After a few moments, Walter stands up with Byard's help. Byard guides him to the bed. And just sit. Relax. Okay. I don't have a wife, just a few people I see. Oh, you have friends. Yeah, I guess I do. Oh, that seems easier. What? Having a friend. I don't think any of this is easier. No. If you're caught, you're caught. You just get smarter about it. I guess. How long were you in jail? I don't know. Hours. You said you were caught too? Yeah. What happened? I was far from home attending a talk in 53. After it was over, I went out into the city. I was looking for places, places like that restroom. I knew there had to be some. Well, by chance, I found this park. Like the park where you found me? S sort of. Um, there wasn't a restroom or anything. And while I was looking around, though, these two guys in a car pulled up. I was pretty cautious, like you. I kept my distance, but they followed me a little. They called out the window at me. They asked if I knew Dorothy. What? I, I was a little confused at first too, but I caught on quickly. I remember the name as a code. Oh. Well, I did walk over and they let me in the car. We drove for a little bit. I remember the one guy not driving, placing his hand on my lap. Finally, the driver found a small parking lot seemed far away. He parked the car and then the driver moved into the back seat. The guy next to me moved his hand from my lap further up to my cock and the other guy sat behind him kissing his neck. One moment I'd be kissing one guy, then the next I was running my lips over the other guy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was until the light shone through the window. Three cops, one for each of us. They yelled at us to get out of the car and when we didn't move as fast as they wanted, they broke the window and ripped the door open. 
one by one, we were dragged out of the car and thrown to the ground. They beat the other guys up and made me watch. After they had their fun with them, they were dragged back to the police car. Then all three cops looked at me. They were laughing, smiling at each other. How'd you like that, boy? When I didn't answer, the one kicked me across the face with the heel of his boot. And blood splattered all over the ground. But I got back up. This is going to be fun. This nigger is a little more uppity than the last one. They, uh, they stood me up and each would have turns punching me. The other two holding my hands back, making sure I couldn't fight. After a while, they let me go and I fell to the ground. I heard one of them ask how they would explain how I got this way. He tried to run, that's what we say. <laughs> they uh, picked me up and threw me in the other car. I was barely conscious. I woke up in a cell the next morning. I, I don't know what to say. I don't let it hold me. Wow. So you went home after? Two months. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. Gives a man a lot of time to think. Think about what? Person that you are. I had to remember the car and that man, me, on the ground bleeding. My vow, nonviolence, like I told you. There was nothing wrong with what I did in that car. Nothing at all. Just like, just like there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah. Nothing wrong. Are you feeling better? Yeah. Good. You know what I think? What? I think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, you, you are funny. <laughs> Walter looks into Byron's eyes. There's a quivering moment between them. Go ahead. Walter leans in and kisses Byron on the lips. There. Walter leans in again and kisses Byard. This time, they don't stop and start to make out on the bed. Blackout. The next morning, early light spills through the hotel window. Walter and Byard lie naked under sheets. Walter's arm across Byard's chest. Walter's eyes flick open with the morning light. He jumps out of bed. What time is it? What? I said, what time is it? Uh, it's 8 a.m. What? What's wrong? I have to get going. Why the hurry? I have to work. I'm sure that your cute little job can wait. Oh, you don't understand. <laughs> just when we were having so much fun. We just messed around. Well, now I'm hurt. What? No, look, I mean, it, it was fun. I, I'm just kidding, Walter. Okay, sure. I, I need to get my shirt. It's over there. Thanks. 
Wait. How do you know my name? Everyone's got a wallet. You stole my wallet? No. I just looked at your picture. <laughs> no harm done. You had no right. It was just a picture. You had no right. It was my wallet and you had no right. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> you doesn't matter. You only needed to do it once. Jeez, it was just a picture. No right at all. All right, I need to get out of here. Uh, look, my, my name is Bayard. There, we know each other's name. I, I need to get out of here. Do you have to go home first? No, no, I'll go straight to work. Your wife isn't going to wonder. I'll explain to her. Sure. Hey, honey. Sorry I didn't call. I was sucking a big black man's big black cock. You're crazy. I was just kidding. You're too serious. You had fun, didn't you? Yeah. I had fun. Good. That's all you had to say. So what are you really going to tell your wife? I got drunk. And stayed at a friend's place. That really works? Yeah. She doesn't ask anymore. That's good to know. So I guess you're going home. Well, maybe. I have a few meetings. Meetings? Yeah, you know, those things when two or more people meet. Yes, I know what a meeting is. You're crazy. You're going to make me believe it if you keep saying it. <sighs> Having sex with a white guy. You never had sex with a white guy? Well... It's not the safest thing to do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's safe for me to sleep with a Negro man either. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Sounds like we're pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So have you? What? Had sex with a white guy before. Aren't you bold? So? Yeah, a couple of times, oh. maybe more. Were they like me? What? Were they like me? What do you mean? Well, uh, did, did they look like me? I don't know. I guess all white guys look the same to me. Oh. They. Don't be thinking it wasn't fun, just different, that's all. Huh. Were some of these men your friends? Friends. Friends, like we mentioned before? Oh, some of them, I guess. Some were more than that. Oh, so they were special. Yeah, you could say that. Some of them were black, I'm sure. <laughs> Walter, black men make their way into the world told that we are less. For most of us, that's more than enough. We don't need another reason to be hated. So men like me are harder for me to find. Oh, I've never been with a black man before. I thought about it, but never did it. Well, now you have. You were nice. Did you think I wasn't going to be? I don't know. I, I, I didn't know what to think. We're all the same when it comes to it. Is that what your meeting's about? What? Your meeting. Are you meeting with other black men? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I am. We have a, a lot of meetings. Yeah. I've seen the marches on TV. Don't. You yeah. have. Yeah, my, uh, my boss watches them, so I watch them. There are lots of people at them. And there's going to be more. You should come march too. <laughs> no, I can't. Why is that? Just because. Afraid to be seen with a bunch of black people. <laughs> no, I just can't. You said you watch them with your boss. Yeah, just watch, that's all. Fine. If that's what your boss at the White House tells you,
How, how much of my wallet did you look at? Enough. <laughs> Don't worry. I ain't going to tell. You have to swear you're not going to tell anyone. I told you I wasn't going to tell. You have to promise. And who would believe me anyway? Promise. Fine, fine, I promise. I won't tell President Johnson about having Walter suck my cock off in a motel and me sucking his. This is not funny. <laughs> well, it kind of is. <laughs> You're not going to tell anyone about this ever. All right, all right, all right. I won't tell. I promise. Good. Okay. Are, are we good? Yes, we are. I just can't have, you know I can't. I know. If it got out and people knew. I know, Walter, I know. Do people know that you? Yeah, quite a few. But, I mean, they, they, they have to be mean to you and treat you. Horrible, revolting. Any word that you can think of, but worse, far worse. Why do you keep doing it? I don't know. Maybe it's the only people that we can be. What do they do to you? What do you mean? Your black colleagues, what do they do? Well, mostly they don't talk to me. At all? No, it's worse. Look, look, <laughs> we don't need to get into this. I want to know. But you have to know what happens. Maybe. No one talks about it. But maybe it's different. Why would it be different? Because I'm black? Why, why would that be different? It just could be. It's not. They don't talk to me. They try to make it impossible for me to be a part of what they're doing. They call me names when I'm not there. Is that the wonderful experience you wanted to hear about? <laughs> I give years, years of my life to speaking up for people, for trying to make a difference. And they, they want to up and make me non-existent. Make me less than everything I've done. Put their damn name over mine and say they did it, not me. If he hadn't spoken up, I would have been dropped completely the second time. When he talks, they listen. He. I think you know who I'm talking about. Oh. You work with Dr. King? Yeah. I work with Dr. King. Wow. I need to go to work. Yeah, you should go. It was fun. It was. Just so you know, you won't see me again. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Walter is reluctant, but leaves the motel room. I may not see you, but someone will, Walter. Scene four, 1982, a public restroom in Austin. It's about as clean as the restroom in scene one. An older Walter walks into the restroom. He is a little leery about the place, but walks over to a urinal and begins peeing. A few moments later, Bayard walks in a little older. He notices Walter at the urinal. 
Bayard first recognizes Walter. Walter looks over trying to be inconspicuous. Are you looking at my big black cock? What? <laughs> oh, let's not do that whole conversation again. Walter, I seem to remember. Walter zips up his pants and moves away. How? Where did you come from? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I didn't follow you here. I'm not a big fan of Texas. A little too far south for me. Why are you here? <laughs> I'm working with a group that deals with uh, civil rights down here. Not an easy task. We barely got the psychiatrist to stop calling us a disease. Sorry? Homosexuals. We are no longer called diseased. <laughs> About time. Yeah, I'm sure. Although with Reagan in charge, who knows? Uh, and why are you here? Uh, my wife and I are living here. She's in the car. We, we live here now. Oh, well, if that works for you. It does. It did. Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just fine. I, I should go to the car. Sure. Of course, there isn't a car out there with a the female in it. Still trying to lie your way out of here. Look, I don't want any trouble, Byard. So, you, uh, you remembered my name. You didn't even have to take my wallet. I, I looked you up after we met. What'd you learn? <laughs> you didn't just march with Dr. Martin Luther King a few times? I organized the marches. Washington? Damn right. He may have spoken. But I made sure he had places to speak. Yeah, I read that. It's, uh, it's a lot to take on. I have a dream, too. <laughs> Is that all you learned? I think so. Well, a little more than most know. I guess. So what are you doing here in this restroom? Look. You don't have to tell me. Let's just say that you needed to go quickly. Let's leave it at that. Sure. I should go. Maybe. I should. Go. Yes. <laughs> that's what you keep saying. I never know when someone might. I know, but that's part of the danger. Yeah. I remember that. That's good to know. Um, I heard what happened. What? I heard what happened. The incident, the arrest for lewd behavior. I read about Lady Bird's remarks. Nice, considering. <laughs> she at least saw the strain you must have gone through. Not sure if she understood why, but beggars can't be choosers, I guess. My heart is aching today for someone who has reached the end point of exhaustion in service to this country. Walter Jenkins has been carrying incredible hours and burdens since President Kennedy's assassination. He is now receiving the medical attention which he needs. I know our family and all his friends. I hope all others pray for his recovery. I read about it like everyone else. I really don't want. I'm sorry. I am. It, it shouldn't happen like that. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. I remember seeing the news and reading the paper and there was your picture. I remembered your face. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It was disgusting what you went through. Thanks. Politics are harsh. No matter what group you belong to, they wanted me to leave too. Almost every one of them. Not King though, he wouldn't have it. <laughs> the first time, there wasn't a choice. But the second, well, he wouldn't have it. Okay. 
I'm sure near the election it wasn't easy. Of course Johnson had to stay popular. What do you mean? If you want to say president, you can't you need to stay popular. He never said a word about you. He didn't need to. Yes, he did. He was your friend. He should have done something. He was silent. I don't understand you. I mean, I would think you'd be grateful for the Voting Rights Act. <laughs> grateful? He worked hard on that. He made it happen. He signed it. That was a big deal. You should be grateful. That the president signed a document that should have been signed by at least 10 presidents before him. <laughs> sure, I'm grateful that he did something. Thank you, President Johnson. I bet that signature took a lot of work. Don't talk about him like that. He fought for you. No, Walter. Johnson did what he was supposed to do. But I'm not thanking him. He wasn't the great emancipator. He was just a guy in power that got forced into a corner. That's not true. I was there, Walter. I organized those buses and watched white men and women with pitchforks and bats breaking windows and pulling us off the bus. They beat us, they raped us, they killed us. You survived? Yeah, I did. But some were not so lucky. Those are the people I thank for my rights. I'm sorry. Dr. King was my friend. We would sit up late talking and, and <laughs> ignoring the holes in his window where a brick had come through the night before. I kept my vow not to cause violence, but when you hear that a man has shot your friend, anger rises up in you and you think, this is Medgar and Malcolm again, and you cry. You cry because you know it's not the end and young black warriors, angels keep dying. You don't know when it'll be you, but someone has told you that it will be you. You wouldn't know anything like that. No. I'm sorry Johnson asked you to leave. It wasn't right. Yes, it was. What? He had to ask me to leave. It wasn't anything. I was sick. It wasn't something that should be tolerated. Do you really believe that? Yes. I do. He, he would have asked me to leave, but I left first. Well, it was your choice, I guess. Yes. My choice. And now you're back in Texas. Yes, I am. And things are good. Yes, they are. And you probably have a few kids. Six. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's quite the collection. <laughs> and you have your wife. Yes. I have my wife. You hesitated. What? I said, you have your wife and you hesitated. No, I didn't. Yes, yeah, you did. You took a brief moment and you hesitated to answer. I didn't, look. And why would you hesitate? I didn't. You did, and, and you know you did. Fine. My wife left me. Is that what you wanted to hear? No. I wanted to hear the truth. That seems quite hard for you. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk. If you didn't want to talk, you would have left already. Last time you wanted to touch my cock, but this time is different. You want something else. 
What do you what do you want? Just say it. What do you want? I want it all to stop. What do you want to stop? Everything. I just want it all to stop. You just think you do. It's it's not so bad. What? It's not so bad. What? How can you say that? Because it's true. My wife left me. I can't walk anywhere without people remembering what I did. I can't go anywhere in the world without people seeing my record. All people see of me is this, this thing that I did. That you are, this person that you are. It was something you did, but ultimately it's something that you are. Did? All people see is this thing that I did, and that is how they judge me. They all judge me. Then own it. What? Own it. If this is what you are, then this is what you are. You're crazy. I can't do that. Yeah. You said the same thing to me before. Well, you are crazy. I thought you liked me crazy. Quiet slides closer to Walter, but he pushes him away. No! Get away from me, you freak. Oh, now I'm a freak, am I? Yes, you are. I am nothing like you. I will never be anything like you. Don't you think for a second that the person who entered the restroom 18 years ago isn't the same person who walked into this restroom today? You may not think it's who you are, but it's definitely the same person. You are still the same person, Walter. No matter how many excuses you make, no matter how many lies you tell others, and no matter how many lies you tell yourself. And then you know what the only difference between us is? You're black. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Stop it. Oh my God, you're funny, Walter. You know that, you're funny. <laughs> stop laughing, I am not funny. Just, just stop laughing. Well, you're funny, Walter, I always said you were. <laughs> I'm not funny, I just said you're black. <laughs> yeah, I'm black. We're both human beings. And what is the difference between us? The difference is that I'm honest about why I came into the restroom and you're not. Otherwise, we came in for the same reason. You just won't admit it. Fuck you. <laughs> Only if you ask. Byron kisses Walter aggressively and then pushes Walter away. Fuck you! Fuck you! I will fucking hit you! You don't think I've seen a fist coming towards me before? I will beat the shit out of you! Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. It won't matter. It won't change anything. mean oh i might be bloody in the face but nothing else will change we will leave here the exact same way as we entered walter shaking stares down byard who refuses to budge his fist shakes towards byard and it looks like he will hit him the last second, Walter slams his fist into the sink and screams. Walter falls to the floor and starts to weep uncontrollably. Byron is floored by this display of self-hatred. Walter cradles his fist on the ground. Walter, Walter, are, are you all right? Your hand. I can't do this anymore. I can't fucking do this anymore. What are you talking about? Can't keep fighting? 
I just want this to end. What, the feelings inside of you? Yes, I want them to end. I want me to end. Walter, they don't end. They're a part of you. And, and you don't want you to end? I just want this to be over. Every time I think it's over, it comes back. It doesn't leave. It never leaves. Why won't it leave? Bayard kneels next to Walter. Bayard takes Walter's face in his hands and presses Walter's hands against Bayard's cheeks. What are you doing? A moment ago, you wanted to hit this face. Sorry. That's okay. I've wanted to hit a few faces myself, white and black. <laughs> I just chose not to. What's wrong with me? Nothing. Feel my face. Don't ask questions, just, just feel my face. Okay. What do you feel? It's just your face. And it's the same face as yours. Mine is just a little darker. We are the same person. We feel the same things. And there are many more of us out there. We're not the same. Not completely, not in the eyes of the world, but in, in this one moment, we are. I should go. Sure. Yes, I should go. Good luck, wherever you go. Thanks, you too. I'll be fine. I'm organizing some rallies if you want to come. No, I don't think I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. Are you going to be all right? Yes, I'm fine. Good. Maybe I'll see you around. Maybe. I don't know. I should go. Of course. You keep saying that. <laughs> Hard to believe a man who keeps telling himself things and never does them. I'm going. Goodbye. <sighs> Goodbye, Walter. End of play.